Hi everyone and welcome to our channel Say Why Chicken Thigh. Today we're going to be setting yet another clutch of eggs, except this time we're going to do something a little bit different than we've ever tried before. We are going to try hatching mostly or only hens using three different methods that we've come across online over the years of raising backyard chickens. Now, one of these methods is a little bit less scientific than the other two methods, but ironically, it's the most favored that we found, and that's by looking at the shape of the hatching egg. Rumor has it that the rounder the hatching egg and the less pointy the egg, the more likely it is to contain a hen and the less likely it is to contain a roux. And to explain that, let me back up a little bit and briefly explain embryology. The gender of the chicken is determined at the time of conception, and that occurs inside the hen's body as she's forming the egg. So by the time you have an egg in your hand, it's already going to be a future hen or a future roux. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try and sort our eggs by their shape and only set the eggs that are most round. The other two strategies that we're going to explore are a little bit more factual and scientifically founded, and they both involve the temperature in which the hatching egg is stored and set. It is scientifically proven that male embryos or rooster embryos are less tolerant of cold than female embryos or hen embryos. So we are going to take our hatching eggs and place them in our fridge at 40 degrees Fahrenheit for eight hours. And theoretically, what this will do is terminate the male embryos. We are also going to maintain our incubator at a temperature that is half a degree Fahrenheit lower than we typically maintain for the duration of the hatch. So we're going to be setting our eggs at about 99 to 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 99.5 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And that of course is also to help eliminate the male embryos and leave us only with hens. So for this particular hatch, we're not so concerned about our hatch rate. We are concerned about our outcome of the gender. Now there are some factors that are going against us for this hatching project. And in particular, it's the fact that we raise mostly Easter agar and olive agar hens on our little hobby farm. And if you know this breed or mixed breed of chicken, you know that it's really difficult to determine the gender of the chick at hatch, if not impossible. So we really won't be certain about the gender of this flock until five or six months after they hatch, until they've reached maturity. So we are in for a long project. The other thing that's not exactly in our favor, since we are only setting round eggs, we wanted to collect the most amount of eggs possible to set. So therefore, we are going to be setting eggs that are one, two and three weeks old, which is not terribly ideal. It is more ideal to set your hatching eggs within one week of them being hatched for the highest viability. Is there baby chickies inside? Yes, there's baby chickies in there. Um, we're going to put all the round eggs that are round like balls inside the egg cartons to hatch into hens. And all the eggs that are narrow and long, those are probably roosters. So we're not going to set those inside the egg cartons, okay? So let's go ahead and find all the round eggs. Holy moly, this is huge. This is round. This is a rooster. This is a rooster. This is round. So our incubator has been running now for 24 hours and keeping at temperature. And like I mentioned, we are going to be keeping it at 99 approximately, between 99 and 100 instead of 99.5 to 100.5. So right now it's reading at 99.5. There is a little bit of fluctuation with our digital incubator and we are using the Farm Innovators Pro Series digital incubator model 4250. And it is awesome. It has given us a hatch rate of about 95.5%. And that was without having the optimal hatching eggs. So I'm really excited to see what it's going to do this time. We set only the roundest 42 eggs we had out of all the eggs we had saved for this hatch. We sorted them by laying hen and had nine eggs from our olive eggers, 
five from the Easter Eggers, three from the Well Summer, five from the Issa Brown Hen, only one egg from our Delaware Cross, eight silky eggs, six eggs from the Light Brahma Hen, and five from the Partridge Cochin. So we're down to two roosters right now. So we have Cobalt. And Cobalt is our silky rooster. We have Gilding, which is our Easter egg or coaching cross. It is now eight days into the incubation process and we're going to go ahead and candle our eggs. The majority of the eggs we candled were developing. We saw 33 embryos. Some others were not growing at all. And others looked not viable and lacked movement. 33 viable embryos out of 42 total eggs set makes this clutch's fertility rate 78.5%. And soon hatch day had arrived. This little hatchling came from an olive egg on day 20, and for hours it was the only one we feared that our experimental temperature change caused the other embryos harm. But as it turns out, it just slowed them down because at day 22, a full day late, the hatchlings began pipping, zipping, and hatching like popcorn. We also had two healthy chicks hatch from the partridge cochin's eggs, one hatch from an egg from the light Brahma hen, one from our Issa brown hen, and three healthy chicks hatch from our Easter Egger hen's eggs. In total, out of the 33 viable embryos, 21 ended up making it to hatch day. Five died during the hatch, 12 died sometime between day 8 and 22, and we luckily had 16 robust and healthy chicks. That gives us an expectedly low hatch rate of about 48.5%. Here they all are at one day old. Female olivegar chicks typically have an all-black head, like this chick. Female partridge cochin chicks typically have more defined stripes than male chicks. And this Easter Egger chick is a colorful surprise. This Americana cross looks just like her mama hen. This chick has a solid black head, but that's a prominent comb. And there's a lot of cream on this Olivegger cross. I find it equally difficult to determine a hen or a roo silky at maturity too. Issa brown hen chicks have an orange face like this chick. And that's a tall comb on this little one. I see that cream spot on the head of this Olivegger cross. And this little one as well. This Easter Egger looks just like our Della girl did as a chick. This pint-sized chick has a punky temperament. Even though none of the eggs from our silky hens hatched, the crosses from our silky roo are easy to point out at half the size of their hatchmates. 
these are the results and our best estimate of this hatch one week after hatch. Go ahead and make your guess. Make your vote for Hen or Roo in the comments. Now, as I mentioned, it's kind of impossible to tell the gender of the majority of these chicks right now at one week old. So stick with us and check back on our channel because in five months from now, we are going to have a definitive answer of if we were able to hatch only hens by using these methods of the shape of the egg, lowering the temperature of the setting eggs, and lowering the temperature of the incubating eggs to see if we could end up with mostly hens. Thanks for watching our video, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to Say Why Chicken Thigh.